Hi there, it's Marzena. The winter finally came, so it was time to make a winter fairy for my mom's collection. Unfortunately, I had a huge problem with a concept for this doll. I just couldn't come up with a design that's original enough. I even told my mom that I won't be able to make this doll because I simply don't have a good idea for her. And my mom was like... Do you want to build a snowman? And boom! Thank you, mom! So, let's make a snow fairy based on a snowman. When I'm thinking snowman, I see round shapes. So, once again, I decided to make a hybrid with monster high head and IMG's body. For the head donor, I chose this armless Draculaura from my stock box. Okay, let's prepare those ladies. First step, cutting the hair as short as possible. Step 2. One minute of doll yoga in a boiling water. Step 3. Decapitation and hair plugs and glue removal. Step 4. Removing their factory face-ups with 100% acetone. Draculora's head had a lot of discolorations, but I was going to paint over it anyway, so not an issue. The original proportions were, of course, not to my liking. So I used a slow shrinking method on the head twice to make those proportions a little more accurate. After that, I could prepare the head for rerouting by painting the scalp white. I prepared some acrylic yarn hair in white with just teeny tiny hints of blue. To easily reroute a shrunken head, you just need to punch new holes for your hair plugs. Sounds time consuming, but it is not that bad. I really enjoy this process. And punching holes during a reroute is a small price to pay for the new and better head to body proportions. When the reroute was done, I squeezed some high tack glue inside the head and spread it evenly with a Q-tip to secure all the new hair plugs inside. After the glue dried, I widened the neck hole and trimmed the neck pack so I could finally put the head on the body. I secured the hair under a piece of cloth and used the epoxy scalp to give her a carrot-like long and pointy nose. Sanded down the surface when it cured, covered the body with a plastic wrap and sprayed the head with two layers of Vallejo White Primer and three layers of Mr. Super Clear. I always start a face up with blushing and shading. For this one I used a few shades of blue soft pastels and a white pan pastel to blend everything better. Whenever I feel like the shading is done, I spray the face with another layer of MSC and I grab some watercolor pencils and, finally, the acrylic paints.
let's talk about the concept for a moment. I've never seen a snowman-based doll, or I just simply don't recall seeing one, so I was immediately hooked on the idea. I thought that maybe one of those snow fairies has been seen by some child long, long time ago, and the kid tried to recreate her appearance in a form of a snow sculpture. So it's not like a fairy looks like a snowman, but the typical snowman is based on a snow fairy. What do you think? I really like this concept. And I'm happy that my mom suggested making a snowman doll to me in the first place. I added some freckles and some beauty marks, because why not? As for the finishing touches, I added some pearly nail powder to her cheeks, chin, forehead and ears. Sprayed her one last time with MSC, glossed her eyes and lips with a Liquitex gloss varnish and the face up was done. I unwrapped her completely, 
exposed her and glued her joints in place with a super glue. I let the glue fully dry, I covered her head with a plastic wrap and I started with the body modifications. I mixed two part epoxy sculpt and I made her buttocks a little bit bigger. Yes, in that position she had a serious case of the flat butt. And I needed those round shapes, you know. A lot of people ask me about my epoxy. And why is it green? Well, epoxy doesn't come in grey only. I own pink and black and I've seen orange, white and yellow as well. So yeah, this is still original product and it is working great. It is just pretty hard for me to get my hands on the grey one, probably because it is the most neutral color, so it's the most popular. But as long as I have these ones, I'm totally fine. I also used epoxy to cover all of her joints and to create three gems on her torso that would look like, you know, snowman's cold buttons. On the next morning, when epoxy was completely cured, I sanded down its surface to make the blending even smoother and to give it some tooth for the paint. I also sanded down the plastic seams on the doll's body and drilled a deep hole in her foot for the stand attachment. It is not easy to drill a hole in OMG's feet because they are made from uh, rubber, not plastic like Monster High doll's feet but it is not impossible. I needed to sharpen the end of the wire and put it on my rotary tool. And it worked in the end. I also filled those weird factory holes in her heels with teeny tiny bits of epoxy. And drill new holes in her back for the wings, of course. We talk a lot about toxicity of the Mr. Super Clear, but it is also important to understand that every canned varnish, paint or primer might be devastating for your lungs, so take your safety measures. So, I used the same primer on the body as on the head and I was very surprised when, after a few days, I noticed that the plastic parts were great, but the rubbery legs and hands were all sticky. Not good. I needed to wipe the white primer from legs and hands with pure acetone and cover those parts once again by hand with regular white acrylic. After like billion layers, I sprayed it with three layers of MSC and blushed the body same way as I did with the face. That would be a lesson for me and you that this specific primer doesn't work well with IMG Dolls rubbery parts. I painted the gems on her torso black and added some white highlights to them. After sealing everything with MSC and unwrapping her head, I noticed that the shading on her face is a bit deeper than on her body. So I matched it better, added even more pearly dust, covered the head again and sprayed the body with MSC once again. Okay, 
So most of you enjoyed my round puffy hairstyles on my bee and pumpkin fairies. I enjoyed them too. But there were always some people that were disappointed that I cut the hair shorter or even that I curled them in the first place. I understand, long hair are simply beautiful. But you need to understand one thing. I don't care. Not like I don't care what you think, no, no. I just don't care that the doll looks great with longer hair, if they don't fit the concept. Those hairstyles, you may like them or not, are a huge part of the design. For example, my pumpkin fairy would be just a tiny girl sitting in a pumpkin without her pumpkin-like hair. When I'm designing a concept for one of my characters, I'm trying to use elements that will create a one cohesive piece, not just a nice looking doll. And yes, this snow lady looked great with her hair long. But have you ever seen a snowman with a hairstyle like this? Round shapes on her head. That is something that I would definitely want to see in a snowman based design. So if you are still mad at me for making those choices, maybe you will like my other dolls better. There are plenty of those with long pretty hair as well. Time for her wings. I used my old resin wings method. I taped a piece of paper to my white ruler, drew a contour of the wings, covered it with a plastic wrap, cut and shaped pieces of wire, placed them on top of the wings pattern and poured some UV resin. This time I also decided to experiment a little with some shiny nail powders by adding them to the resin before curing it. What the f***? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. With my second try, I just cured the pure resin and then I rubbed the dust into the other side of the wing. Then I put some more resin on top. looked nice. When all four wings were fully cured, I trimmed their edges with some fine milling cutter on my beloved micromotor. After wiping all of the dust away, I just painted some white veins with an acrylic paint and secured everything with another thin layer of resin. They turned out pretty cute, I think. I glued them into the holes in the doll's back. I used super glue as always, but I also additionally secured them with a UV resin this time. For the finishing touches, I painted her nails and toenails white and I added some gloss to her torso gems.
She was ready for her stand. It was a simple one once again. I made a wooden cylinder, put a silver tape border around it, and poured inside a mixture of wood glue and kitty litter. While the mixture was drying, I poked it here and there once or twice to create an uneven surface. When the stand cured completely, I drilled a hole for the attachment and sprayed the whole thing with two generous layers of white Vallejo primer. After that, I just gave it some blue tones and also a little bit of a shine. Spray the stand with some varnish and after gluing the fairy to her stand, another project was done. I really like how she turned out. This concept was simple but very cute. Orange pointy nose could end up a little bit weird or even creepy, but it gives such a nice contrast to the overall design, so I'm very glad that I included it. I just wish you could see how shiny she is in real life. I can really see some child trying to recreate her in the form of a snow sculpture after encountering her. And I think, or at least I hope, that my mom will gladly add her to her fairy collection. What do you think about this approach to a snow fairy team? You can let me know in the comments. Click the like button if you like her and don't forget to subscribe with a bell for more upcoming videos. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon! Mm-hmm.